Howdy watch fans, hope you are healthy and life is treating you well. This episode picks up where I left off on my trip to Holstein, Switzerland to visit Oris HQ. In particular, the Oris Boutique visit, and so if you're interested, hey, stick around. Just as a quick recap, in the last episode I mentioned that I had a chance to make a nice side trip to Holstein, Switzerland to visit Oris HQ on my way back from my friend's wedding in Romania. After a bit of timing mishap, I found myself arriving at Oris HQ right before they shut down for lunch. Luckily, I found a roadside cafe bakery to bide my time until the Oris Boutique opened back up at 2pm. Day 2, The Boutique The Oris Boutique that day was staffed by Aaron, the watchmaker and manager, and Helena, the boutique specialist. Aaron was occupied helping a group of about 10 to 15 German speakers on the factory tour, which left a wonderfully friendly and knowledgeable Helena to answer all my mundane questions. While not on a official tour, Helena was nice enough to provide a 15-minute presentation on the history and current activities at Oris HQ. So as it turns out, in addition to the relatively new boutique, the current building also houses the repair, maintenance, and refurbishing activities for the company. Along with the boutique, the HQ houses offices and a repository for the Oris legacy. While this information can be gleaned from the website, it was interesting to hear the history and legacy of Oris coming from Oris's younger team members. Helena explained that Oris began in 1904 when Paul Cutin and Georges Christian bought the manufacturing facility of a defunct company called Loner & Co. They named their new company Oris after a stream that flowed nearby. And this was the beginning of the relationship between Oris and the town of Holstein that continues nearly 119 years later. You can tell that there is a particular pride that is ingrained in this relationship. Oris is deeply connected to Holstein and the surrounding towns and villages. You can see this in the beers, the mustards, and the other local products that are featured in the Oris Boutique. After Helena's history presentation, I took slow and unhurried steps looking at the old photos, local products, and the repair activities going on behind this large window near the impressive espresso machine. Now luckily the shop was empty and no one else was in the boutique, so I took a bit of time at the movement display. In particular, I wanted to see the Caliber 400 in-house design and develop movement up close. Now you can tell that there's a lot of pride in this movement as Helena explained that the movement, the creation of the movement, is to reclaim Oris's history and legacy. Oris's efforts to create in-house movements apparently started with the Caliber 110, created for the 110th anniversary. The 400 is no less impressive as a 5-day double power reserve barrel automatic movement. Of course, Oris now has 10 in-house movements with the latest being the hand-wound Caliber 473. Making my trip to Holstein and stepping into this well-maintained historic building, I can see why there's so much pride in the Oris legacy. I completely understand the desire to create an in-house movement for Oris. It's an opportunity to recapture a bit of legacy and show off a bit of its watchmaking prowess. It makes sense. However, my hope is that these efforts do not translate to an elimination of the Salida base watches. What I mean is, with price differences between the Salida and in-house caliber 400 watches, for example the popular Aquas Diver on a full bracelet, price differences can reach you know, 1,300 USD between the $3,700 caliber 400 powered watches and the 2,400 USD Salida powered watches. I'm hoping that they don't ostracize the more value-conscious Aura shopper by eliminating the cheaper entry model with the Salida movement. For me, the fact that Oris watches provide a reasonable entry price to access popular models is a huge reason why I like the brand so much. Oris stands as a respected, independent Swiss watchmaker focused solely on mechanical movement-based watches with a very competitive luxury entry price. And I'm hoping that the Caliber 400 is truly an effort to expand appeal and not a movement to pivot away from its more affordable watches using the more than respectable Salida movements. But I'm curious uh, what you folks think. 
Is Oris trying to reclaim its passion by creating this in-house design movement? Or are they playing the margin game? Are they trying to move up market by eliminating the entry-level models using the Salida movement? I'm curious. Let me know what you think. So after a great discussion on the Oris movements and all of its products and a nice slow paced peruse of the watches, I was happier than a kid in a candy shop and honestly trying my best not to succumb to the urge to buy another Oris watch. What I eventually settled for was buying a few Oris trinkets and grabbing some of the local products that the Oris boutique had showcased. All in all, I was so happy to be able to make this trip. But before I go, I just wanted to showcase three of the best points about this trip to Holstein and the visit to Oris HQ. And at number one, it's the experience of going to Basel, enjoying Basel and then going to the more smaller towns and villages all the way up to Holstein. That was really an interesting experience, getting to experience the beauty and busyness of Basel and then slowly making your way to Liestel and finally ending up in the sleepy but charming town of Holstein. And number two, it has to be the ease of public transportation. Every single tram, every single bus, every single train was well organized and punctual. <clears throat> US, are you listening? Punctual buses. What a novel concept. Thanks to this wonderful public transportation available in Switzerland, you can make your way from Zurich to Basel, then to these smaller towns out near Holstein without a single problem. Fantastic. And number three, of course, it has to be the warm and inviting folks over at Oris HQ. I mean, sure, yes, an English tour would have been fantastic, but the kind gesture and attention that Helena provided in explaining the history and legacy of Oris and answering all of my inane and mundane questions. I mean, it was just such a fantastic experience. You love the watch. You wear your favorite Oris all the way up to Holstein, and it's a welcoming atmosphere. They ask you questions like, where are you from? How long have you owned your Oris? What I'm saying is they basically took the time to make sure that an Oris customer and an Oris owner feels appreciated and welcomed. Well, watch fans, thank you for sticking around for my watch adventure and visit to Oris HQ in Holstein. The visit was a hoot, a wonderful opportunity to enjoy a bit of Swiss countryside and chat up a knowledgeable and friendly staff member at the Oris Boutique. All in all, I would recommend anyone taking a visit to the land of chocolates, mountains, and watches to make a stop over at Oris HQ. As we say around these parts, whether you're wearing an Oris ProPilot Excalibur 400 or a digital Casio World Timer, you do you. In the immortal words of Humpty Hump from the Digital Underground, do what you like. Peace. <laughs>